How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Shop Talk here on the Madison Angling Channel. I'm Noah. I am a full-time guide here in southern Wisconsin. And if you've been following this series, uh, I've kind of been on a walleye kick here because it's walleye season. It is March. It's actually uh, the middle of March right now. And the last couple of videos I did, I was talking about three ways. Not that kind of three-way, right? A three-way rig. Got to keep it PG. Three-way rigs for walleyes, especially here on the Wisconsin River where I am today. I actually just finished up a guide trip and it was a tough morning. We had 16 degrees this morning when we started. We did get some fish. We caught some legals. Uh, we even got a gigantic sturgeon, which was really neat. You never know what you're going to run into up here on the river. But one of the rigs we use today is a three-way rig, but it's something really goofy and it may be something that you guys haven't seen before. And I promise it's weird, but it works. And I did actually see somebody leave a comment about using this technique as part of your three-way rig in one of the previous videos. And I wanted to comment on it and say, shh, but I decided not to bring any attention to it. And I've been kind of debating on making this video for a little while here because this is something that has saved my butt many, many times on many, many occasions when it's cold out like this. And uh, this is gonna seem kind of weird, but I promise you it works. And that is using tandem floating Rapalas in line with each other on a three-way rig. Let's get into it, guys. This thing's pretty stinking cool. Now, I want you guys to keep in mind, this is how I run this rig. There's so many different ways you can do it. My way is not the only way. So feel free to deviate from what I'm showing you with line choice, leader length, you know, all that stuff. Set it up the way you want to do it, but as long as the functioning part of your rig is similar to what I'm doing, it's going to work great. So the first thing you're going to notice here, we got a bait caster. Why am I using a bait caster? Uh, for me, it's because I want a little more stiff rod and it's it seems like it's kind of difficult to find a really well-balanced um, action and power in a spinning rod for this technique because typically I'm using a little bit more lead. I'm fishing this a little more aggressive than a typical three-way rig. So I like a bait caster. And one thing that's really nice in, in certain scenarios is having a bait caster with a flipping switch on it. And I'm not even sure if there's a lot of bait casters that are even, um, coming with flip and stitch switches anymore. Wow, say that three times fast, flip and switch. Um, what's nice about a flip and switch when you're doing this kind of thing, especially when you're fishing a current and the bottom changes is to let out line um, instead of you know free spooling, letting line out, re-engaging the reel. Uh, a flip and switch basically temporarily lets you push down on the spool release and there's a spring in there that springs it back into place. So you only let out line as long as you're holding it down and you let your thumb up, it locks back into place, you're back to fishing. So it makes changing the amount of line you have out as you're moving as the bottom changes a lot easier, a lot quicker. It's easier to adjust. You don't have to switch hands and stuff. So that's one reason why I like using a bait caster as well. On this one, I have 12 pound mono for my main line. Why aren't you using braid? Because I have 12 pound mono on here. Typically I'm doing this in really, really cold water. I want a little bit of stretch, especially when you have a lot of current. Today, we got quite a bit of current. So I wanna make sure I have some give because I have a little stiffer rod. This is a medium heavy six and a half foot casting rod. I want something that has some stretch to it. So my line is gonna act as that shock absorber in this current, so we're not pulling hooks out of fish. Alrighty, here we go. We're getting closer to the weird part. So before we get to the weird part, I'll show you what we got going here. If you've seen the other three-way videos, this looks very familiar. We got our three-way swivel. We have our dropper. This one's about 12 or 13 inches. I have about a one ounce lead weight on here. And that weight is going to vary based on how deep you're fishing, how much current you're fishing. There, there's so many different variables. So for me to say you need this size weight, doesn't really do you a whole lot of good. So just use whatever feels appropriate to get your line down at about a 45 degree angle in relation to the rod tip to the bottom. And you do wanna be making bottom contact with this. So whatever weight it takes to maintain that 45 degree angle is, is the weight you want. Now for the fun part, this is where people are gonna get really weirded out, but I promise you guys, it works. What do we have going on here? <laughs> Goofy stuff, but it works. So in my other three-way videos, you may have remembered if you've seen them, if not, go back and watch some of those. But uh, I mentioned leader materials. A lot of people like fluorocarbon. I prefer mono because mono floats and so do these crankbaits. So I have a mono leader and I've got about a three foot section of mono to my first bait. 
and it's really important that we're using floaters for this and you'll see why here in a minute. So the first one I have tied right in line there like you normally would. The second one, you could either tie to that split ring or you could split ring on a small swivel. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but I have a very small swivel split ringed on there, which I tied the other half of my leader about another three feet to my rear floating Rapala. Now, we want to use floating Rapalas for this, okay? We want to make sure that these baits are not digging and getting down and getting snagged. So we're not using countdowns, we're not using shad wraps, even balsa shad wraps, they're still pretty aggressive. You want something that has a nice subtle action to it, especially in this cold water, but also something that's going to keep your rig basically within a foot of the bottom. These floaters work great. So notice I have two these are both number seven original floaters. I got one in char, one in black and silver. These are my two favorite colors up here on the river. Now, as far as sizes go, I will go down to a size five. I will go up to a size nine. Now, obviously, if you're fishing bigger fish, you might wanna jump it up even a little bit bigger. You could even go a little bit smaller if you need to. Noah, what about using jointed baits? Absolutely. Now, typically I'm not gonna be using these jointed baits until a little bit, you guys probably can't even see my face because of the lighting. You don't wanna see it anyway, you're here for the fish. The jointed baits I prefer to use when it gets a little bit warmer out. These things have a heck of a lot more action than the floating minnows do. So I, I like to wait until the water's about 50 degrees or greater to fish the jointed baits. Now, that's just my opinion. There's people who fish jointed baits all year long and catch plenty of fish. But in my opinion, I like the original floaters when the water's really cold. So going back to this rig here, um, you might be wondering, why are we running two of these? What's the point? Well, A, you got two baits down there, right? You could do two different colors and try to figure out what the fish want on a given day. B, these baits do very different things. Now I want you to think about this, especially these floating Rapalas. If you guys have fished with these or played with them, you know that they have a very subtle action to them. They're not very aggressive. So when you put drag on one of these baits, so this front one, obviously we have another bait back here pulling on it in this current, this bait is very stationary. It essentially just suspends off the bottom and it has just a tiny little wobble to it, hardly anything at all. And what's fun is kind of figuring out what kind of a mood the fish are in. And this is a really good tool for figuring out if they're gonna be very aggressive on a given day, or if we need to slow things way down and make it really easy for them. And in fact, today, the fish I caught on this rig were all on the front bait. On higher action days, a lot of times they're gonna grab this back one. So I'll show you guys here, I'm gonna cut in a little video clip here of these baits in the water. So you can see that the back bait is running normally. We got lots of great action out of that bait. It looks good. Now we're gonna look at the front one and see how it just kind of hangs there. It doesn't really do a whole heck of a lot and that's perfectly okay because there's days when the fish don't want to hunt something down. They just want an easy meal. They want to take a half a tail kick off the bottom, grab it and that's it. They just want an easy snack. So that's one of these rigs that, you know, I really like to use to kind of deduce what's going to happen on a given day. Usually in the first 15 minutes of fishing, I can get a pretty good idea um, on, a, you know, how active the fish are probably going to be for the next couple hours. Um, another thing that's really cool about this rig is not only can you fish it um, manually, you know, you actually fish this thing working it up current or on a current seam. That's how you fish these things. You know, you know, you don't want to cast it into slack water and try to pull it along, reel it in. This is something you're fishing in current, okay? This is not for slack water. Now, if you are fishing slack water, the boat needs to be moving. Otherwise, this thing's going to get snagged. So always moving forward, always moving up current. One of the really cool things you can do with this rig though, and uh, I've only seen a couple other people do this. In fact, uh, my buddy Jesse Qualley, who guides on uh, the Wisconsin River here, a little bit further north of me here, um, he actually puts these in a rod holder and just lets them sit, basically trolling, sitting still. So he'll have uh, a tandem rig or a single floater rig on a three-way in a rod holder, and he'll pitch a jig while he's letting this thing basically just stationary troll, which is pretty stinking cool when you think about it. Um, why are they all floaters? Uh, because that's just what I like. It's what I use. And that's what a lot of people use. 
could you use the scatter wrap version of these? Yes. There's one thing to keep in mind though. They have much more of a wandering action by design, which in some cases can be a great triggering mechanism, but when you're dealing with really cold water temps, sometimes less is more. So these floaters are almost always a safe bet. Alrighty, so I know my lighting is not great guys, but I want to show you guys real quick here how I like to fish this thing. So a couple different ways. One, I like to get on a current seam. I'm not really on a great current seam right here. I had to run way down river. It's a weekend just to get away from people so I could film this. Um, but basically pretend that we have maybe out in front of us here, maybe there's a little point. Ooh, it's windy. A little point that sticks out. There is one way up there, but somebody's fishing it. A point that maybe sticks off the bank here and creates a little bit of a current seam with some slack water towards shore, which we actually have a little bit of there, but it's really rocky and sketchy. So we're not going to go over there. But basically I want to set up right on the edge of that. And I like to fish these on the current side. I want these in the current. That's really the key to making these work is having moving water. So I'm going to drop this thing down to the bottom. Um, I am in the current. So you can see my, my line angle is not super great here. It's way beyond 45 degrees. Even if you're a little bit wider than 45, it's going to be okay. But biggest thing is maintaining bottom contact. So the way I like to fish these, especially in cold water is very subtle. So I'll touch the bottom and it usually every 10, 15 seconds, I'll just give it a little pop. And what that does is it makes that front bait kind of dart and then it kind of darts and dies, darts and dies. And that back one just kind of speeds up a little bit since it's always moving. So just little pops every once in a while. Option number two, slap it in your finger gear rod holder. <laughs> there you go. Just let it sit in the current, wait for the rod to bend over, bam, you got a fish. Um, the other way you can do this, especially if you're fishing in very slow moving water, ooh, hitting some ice. Uh, fishing in really, really slow moving water is creeping your way up current. Uh, so places like the Fox River or, uh, you know, in Oshkosh, uh, even the Fox River in Green Bay up in De Pere. You could do the same thing there, but you're creeping up current, always going up current, not fishing down current, always working up is basically just pumping it. Kind of like pumping flies, right? Same thing, except we're using floaters. So we're creeping the boat forward 0.8 miles an hour or so, just fast enough that you're still making bottom contact and when the baits are sitting idle you know they're not you're not fishing them they're just sitting in the water you want to see that back bait wobble at least about this fast so however fast that takes to, to make that thing run in, in calm water so drop it down and as you're moving forward we're just kind of pumping it so it's kind of jigging it right up let it fall back touch the bottom up let it fall back touch the bottom and sometimes you'll feel the bite sometimes you'll go to sweep forward and it's just heavy and you got one but that's pretty much it guys it's really really simple but the key is just not overworking it start subtle and then gradually add a little more and more action to it but what's nice about this rig again that front bait does very very little and it's it's actually kind of hard to overwork that front one the back bait is the more active one so you can kind of figure out on a given day do they want it slow do they want it fast so this is a great way to kind of figure out what kind of mood these fish are in another quick tip here you may be wondering how do you store something like this that's a great question uh, the way that I store this is on all my three ways, I like to put a snap on my dropper line to my weight so I can just pop the weight off. There we go. One less thing to worry about. Close your snap so it doesn't get snagged on stuff. And then I actually take my line. I do this with drop shots too. Wrap it around my reel. Keep it tight. And I'm going to take this rear bait, my back floater. I'm going to hook it to the foot of one of my guides. Little PSA here, guys. Don't stick hooks inside your guide insert because it will scratch the either ceramic or metal that's in there and eventually it'll wear out your uh, your line. Not a good thing. So always stick it to the foot of your, your guide, not in the guide. But that's it. You can kind of see how they're nice and in line. Nothing's tangled. You cannot put this in your rod locker like that. Don't do that. It's going to be a big mess. You could take that rear bait off if you wanted to and just hook that snap onto one of the uh, guide feet. That works just fine. And then you can slide it in your rod locker, no problem. But since I know I'm going to keep using this rod uh, over the next couple days, uh, I'm just going to throw it over in the side here in my rod pile and it should ride pretty nice. So there you go. Just a quick little tip on how to store this without making a gigantic mess. All right, guys, there you go. I know it's a weird looking rig, 
but it's definitely something to keep in your back pocket, especially if you're on a tough bite, especially when you have a cold front. I know it's very strange and it's hard to deviate from things that you've done in the past that do work, but sometimes branching out and trying some weird stuff can pay off big time. So if you guys give this a try this, this spring, let me know, leave me a comment. Or if this is something that you like to do, um, drop some tips below, right? Share with, share with people. That's what this whole channel is about, is sharing and learning together. Uh, it's not about just going out and catching fish and showing off. I wanna share this stuff with everybody so you guys can go out and have fun and catch a bunch of fish. And if you guys are looking to get rigged up with these, Pat over at DNS has a nice selection of a bunch of different Rapala products. Um, floaters, Husky Jerks, ripping Wraps, you name it, he's got it. If he doesn't have it, he'll get it for you. So that's it guys, that's all I got for you. Thank you guys so much for making these Shop Top videos so much fun. You guys are the reason that these happen. So please keep dropping some suggestions down in the comments below. What else do you guys wanna learn about? Should we do something on boat control? Should we do something on reading water? What do you guys wanna talk about? This is your channel guys. So drop some comments below, let me know what you guys want. And uh, hopefully you guys are having some fun here. Um, got some interesting life things coming up here in the next month so if I don't upload some stuff bear with me uh, they're all good things don't worry um, but just as a heads up I might have a, a week or two where I may not have a video up so that being said guys thank you guys so much for watching hopefully you guys are having fun fishing this spring we'll see you on the next video